going to get to the teachable moment aspects of the Obama's trip to the Redneck Riviera and the uh, the Gulf. That, no, 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 it's not my term for it. That's what the elites call uh, the Florida and Mississippi uh, Gulf Coast, Alabama Gulf Coast. Red, it's, it's what the ruling class calls the great beaches of the Florida and Mississippi, Alabama Gulf Coast. Obama and his family travel the Gulf Coast this weekend to support businesses that rely on tourists but have been devastated by the oil disaster. The family will leave tomorrow morning for Panama City Beach. Even as the president talks about what our next steps are in response, obviously part of this will be highlighting the tremendous economic toll that has taken place, said White House spokesman Robert Gibbs, who has yet to respond, by the way, to the challenge from Cindy Sheehan for the pee-off. Now, if, if Obama really wanted to help the people in the Gulf, what could he do? The administration itself has put out news that there's no oil. The administration even, they can't find any oil, it's all gone. The administration somehow wanting credit here after labeling this the worst environmental disaster in our nation's history. The Obamas are only going down to the Redneck Riviera because they were pressured to do so. 27 hours on the ground, and next week they go on the real vacation. Ten days in Martha's Vineyard. But I read a statement like this, the opening line in this CNN story. Obama and his family will travel to the Gulf Coast this weekend to support businesses that rely on tourists but have been devastated by the oil. Do you realize, and it's coming up in the next segment, what a total batch of lies were told by science, the administration, and the media about this disaster. There should not be a reason for Obama to go down and talk to businesses who have been hurt. There should not have been any businesses hurt. Businesses were harmed purely because of the average predictable hysteria that attaches itself to virtually every story. There's a story out started yesterday. It's getting amplified today. Chicken, poultry products, the biggest source of food poisoning in America. Oh, no! Who knew? Are there any reports of recent food poisoning? No. We have a bunch of dunderheads sitting around with too much time on their hands doing study after study after study, studying human behavior here is human behavior there, creating crisis after crisis after crisis. Same thing happened in the Gulf. There was no reason for a panic. There was no reason to shut down tourism. There was no reason for any of it, except it sold newspapers or got ratings, or a crisis is too great a thing to waste. Let's manufacture one. It was never warranted. And the real truth is, if Obama really, really cared, and if he really wanted to support businesses that were hurt, he'd go talk to some oil workers, because they're the ones he has put out of business. The real crisis is the drilling moratorium that has been totally unnecessary. It has not been lifted. And I might point out that our esteemed president, after having his iftar dinner tonight, will not meet with anybody in the oil business at all while on the ground for 27 hours in the Gulf. The Gulf recovery Obama does not want to see. This is from the morning bell of the Heritage Foundation. Next week, for the fifth time since July, the first family will get on Air Force One and go up to Martha's Vineyard. Stay in a state that rents for up to $50,000 a week. Before they head north, they will first grace Panama City Beach, Florida, with their presence this weekend for what's being billed as a solidarity vacation to the Gulf Coast. Not on the agenda, any meetings with oil workers in other Gulf states who are now unemployed, thanks to President Obama's Gulf oil drilling ban. If the president really wanted to see the economic damage his own policies are causing, he could first stop in Pascagoula, Mississippi, where idle oil rigs in the Signal International shipyard have formed an eerie floating ghost city that locals have dubbed Rig Row. Instead of being deployed at sea, where they could be creating wealth for the country and jobs for Gulf residents, these rigs are wasting away idly in port as a direct result of Obama's oil drilling moratorium, a moratorium that when was first issued on just deep sea rigs, a federal judge ruled was arbitrary and capricious. Undaunted, 
The regime doubled down, issuing a broader oil drilling injunction that's killing even more jobs in the first ban. Lou Doliner has, or maybe it's Doliner, I'm not sure he pronounces its name. It's National Review Online today. Our real Gulf disaster. And this is what I was referring to in the previous half hour. And it's, if I may get personal here for just a moment, one of the areas in which I find myself in the most controversy is simply when I state things that are not part of a formula or not part of a conventional wisdom. Hey, this is an example. We hear news of the oil spill. We hear and see pictures, see pictures of all the oil escaping from the leak. What ensues everywhere is an utter panic, followed by stories of total destruction, the end of life as we've known it in the Gulf of Mexico and in the coastal areas. A sheer, unadulterated panic. I didn't get on board. I said, wait a minute. Nature's going to fix this. Even if this spill keeps up till August until they get the relief wells drilled. This is a minimal amount of oil. It's hardly, you couldn't find this amount of oil in the entire Gulf if you didn't know it was there. And then later, we had people doing studies and found out that if the Superdome or the new Texas... Um, Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys Stadium in Texas, was the Gulf. The amount of oil in it is the equivalent of a 24-ounce can of beer. You couldn't find the oil if you didn't know it was there. It's how insignificant it was. Kept telling you about how the Mexican spill, Ixtar, 1979, far, far worse, and that we had totally recovered from it nevertheless. And that it had devastated the Texas Gulf Coast. But never mind, I was called stupid irresponsible, a hack, following through on my global warming denier position, when in fact all I was doing was engaging in critical thinking, rather than following the crowd. An entire industry has been shut down on the basis of an unwarranted panic, based on an unwarranted reaction to an event that itself was amplified way out of proportion to its reality. And at insult to injury, the President of the United States is making a face-saving move. One he really doesn't want to make in the first place, going down there because he's been told you better get down there because your wife just got pictured in a lot of bad optics over in Spain. And you're going to Martha's Vineyard for 10 days next week. You better get down there. So he's going to go down there and he's going to talk to people who have been hurt by himself and his administration, his experts and his media. Tourism. People were scared. Remember, we had this story from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. The 8th graders, the 10th grade, whatever it was, took a field trip to go find the oil. And the reason was to see the devastation and the damage being wrought by capitalism and big oil. And I got ripped for that. I got ripped for making fun of that. But I, using common sense and critical thinking, knew that the kids were being used by activist-oriented teachers who saw an opportunity to move forward their own anti-capitalist global warming agenda. Here's Mr. Doliner, four months after the Deepwater Horizon spill, which Obama called the worst environmental disaster America has ever faced. The oil is disappearing, the fisheries are returning to normal. It turns out that this incident exposed some things that are seriously in the world of oil. And I don't mean exploding wells. There was a broad-based failure on the part of the media, a broad-based failure on the part of the science establishment, a broad-based failure on the part of the federal bureaucracy. With the nation and its leaders looking for facts, we got instead a massive plume of apocalyptic mythology and threats of Armageddon. In the Gulf, this misinformation has cost jobs, it has lowered property values, it has devastated tourism, and its effects on national policy could be deep and far-reaching. To get an idea of the scale of misinformation involved, consider how many of the most widely reported narratives about the spill have turned out to be dubious.